show troop on board? Yes. Which car? This car, here. Well, wait a minute, they'll all be off. <laughs> Is this a McGonagall repertory troop? Uh-oh. Where's the great McGonagall? He isn't here, but I'm his daughter. Has anything happened? Not yet. But I have something here I'd like to give him. I'll see that he gets it. Not on your tintype. That's my job. Well, jail can't be any worse than this. Ah, the best thing this troop does is to get out of town just one jump ahead of the sheriff. Yeah, and I can't jump like I used to. What's wrong? What'd he do? It ain't what he did do, it's what he didn't do. Snuck out of his boarding house. Didn't pay his board bill. Didn't pay nothing. Nothing. Are you McGonagall? No. <laughs> Pardon me, just a little lung trouble. That's enough of that. Are you the great McGonagall? I am, sir, yes. <laughs> then I have something to give you. Huh? There. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. oh, just what I've been waiting for. I thank you. Thanks for the light. Good evening, my happy little family. How are my little children at the theater? Mr. McGonagall, I've got to have some money. Yes, my lad, how much? Two dollars. If I had two dollars, I'd start a number two company. For two cents, I quit. Pay them off. Tickets, please. Two score and five Tickets. years ago, when I was playing Mahoney City Tickets. up in... Ah, oh, good evening, sir. How do you do? I refer you to my amanuensis, Mr. Marmaduke Gump, our manager. I am the owner and the star. Excuse me, please. Tickets. Uh, if you'll point out the members of your troop. Here's two. Here's three. Here's two. Here's four. What have you got under your foot, Pop? Well, under my foot? What? Nothing, there. Nothing under there. The other foot? Other? Uh, my other foot? Oh. Oh, goodness sake. I'm glad you noticed that. What sharp eyes you have. Let's see, uh, my sleeping car ticket. Uh, I j must have dropped it. Here, I bought it for you. You, you what? I bought it for you this morning, dear. No, you didn't. Huh? I didn't buy it? I saw that man drop it. Man dropped it? Well, that's funny. Give I it ha back to him. Hmm? Give it back to him, Pop. Give it back? Oh, oh uh, are you sure he dropped it? Oh, well, then, of course, I, it'd be dishonest to keep it. I'd give it back, but I'd like to know where that one is I bought for you. I heard it. Why, don't wait up for me, dear. I may play a little for cheesy before coming to bed. I had a ticket. I think it was upper nine. Upper nine. Upper nine made up. I'll see. George? Yes, sir. Upper nine ready, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Get me the ladder, please, George. Yes, sir. Thank you.
That gentleman has upper nine. Maybe it was upper six. No, upper six is occupied. You don't think I'd lie to you about a ticket, do you? Hey, maybe this telegram will tell you who I am. J. Weldon Potter, Grand Mogul, the High Chamber Secret Order, the Vale Knights of Matthias. Quiet, please, quiet. What is this, a cattle car? Rat! Well, I had a ticket. No, I, I, I'll take you. I'll get you one of these. Come on. Keep going. I have a ticket. I have a ticket. I have a ticket. Betty. And where do you think you're going? I'm going to Bellefontaine. Listen, Willie, you've got to stop following us around from town to town. Well, I'm not following us around. I'm following you. Well, you can't follow me either. Listen, Betty, I'm going to be an actor. I'm crazy about the theater and crazy about you, too. You're just crazy. You listen to me, young man. You're not going to get off at Bellefontaine. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You're going to stay on the train till you get back to college, where you should have been a month ago, do you hear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Are you going to do what I say? No, ma'am. Oh, you're impossible. You're... you're a fool. Yes, ma'am. Bell Fontaine, boss. Mm. Bell Fontaine, boss. Uh, Bell who? Bell Fontaine. Oh, hello, Bell, dear. How are you? I'll leave two tickets to the box office for you. No, sir. Bell Fontaine, next stop. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, oh, hello, hello, for now. Ah, uh, uh, so it is. Ah, uh, so it is. Oh, so I slept well last night. Walking around in my nightshirt. What's the idea of wearing a nightshirt big enough for people to walk around in? Get in your purse. I was when my face you stepped on. Face you stepped on? What are you, Chinese people? <laughs> you walking around stepping on people's faces. I I break your throat. What? You love you. What? The idea. The idea of Why? Stepping on people. Was he talking to me? Poppy stole my melon. You've been creating a lot of disturbance around here this morning. Uh -huh. You! Uh -huh. I did so! Uh -huh. Why are you doing that? Why did you do I break my melon. Hang with me, hang with me. Good morning, gentlemen. I am the Greek McGonagall. How do you do? Mind drawing your legs in? Thank you. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Marmaduke. Get my parade costume out. Immediately. Oh, pardon me, rat. Thanks. Good morning, little bright eyes. I hope you're well this repulsive morning. Fine, Pop. How are all of my little children in the theater this morning? Uh, that's what I thought. I have a telegram here. It will warm the cockles in your heart. I received it last night at Pocatello. The Greek mechanical, America's leading tragedian. It's headed that way. Vein number 42, upper burr, uh, uh, 
Private car number three. Dear sir, in reply to your telegram, the advance sale indicates the, world, the best business this theater has ever known. Signed, Sneed Hearn. The manager. I expect the populace down to greet us at the station. Possibly with a brass band. <laughs> Godfrey Daniels, strike me up a country. Here we are. She not only brought a brass band, but they brought out the militia. I thank you. beautiful city of Bellefontaine, words fail me in expressing our gratitude. Few of you realize the penalty of greatness to which myself and my company are martyr. During our peregrinations of the seven seas, we have always had a fond spot in our heart for dear old Bellefontaine. And in conclusion, I wish to thank you on behalf of myself, the great McGonagall. And on behalf of my daughter, Miss Betty McGonagall. And on behalf of the great McGonagall Company. <laughs> reception has touched my heart. The opera house is sold out tonight, but for your benefit, I have ordered 100 more chairs. But remember, one and only one chair to each person. Bring me that cane. Schaefer. I hope I haven't disturbed you. Mrs. Wendell Schaefer, come down here. Now, uh, by the by, how is the good Mrs. Wendell Schaefer this morning? My dear Mrs. Wendell Schaefer, how will you look? I trust you're fit. Don't use the word trust around here, Mr. McGonagall. I hear it too often. I merely use it as a hyperbole. Now, listen to me. After you've eaten my food and slept in my bed, not one piece of baggage goes out of here until you've paid your bill. My dear Mrs. Wendelshaper, our unimpeachable integrity has never even been slightly questioned. Bertha, show them to their rooms. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget to count the towels. Yes, ma'am. Is the dining room open yet? No. Ah, my dear Bertha, how charming you look today. 
Well, you might as well pick up your bags. There ain't nobody gonna help you carry them upstairs. Have we any cigars? Yes, sir. Thanks. See if he has any matches. Thank you. Gee, it sure is swell out here. Nice view. You know, I like these little towns, seeing a new one every day. I hate them. Traveling with the girl you love? Wallace Livingston, will you talk sense? Well, I am. I mean, I do. You I'll... ought to be back at school, studying, making something of yourself. Betty, listen. I'll go back to school, if you'll go with me. You know that's impossible. Well, why? Because I don't belong there any more than you belong here. What do you mean? Oh, I'm... In the first place, you're rich. Oh, my father is, but... Yes, and I know what rich people think of our profession. <sighs> you don't know my father. You wait till he hears about you barnstorming around the country with a rep show. Well, he might get mad. A little. Didn't give him too much soup, did you? Mm -mm. No, that's right. Give him plenty of bread and crackers. Uh-huh. And remember... Nobody gets a second helping of apple pie. Uh-uh. And we don't serve ice cream. Uh-huh. That's all you're supposed to know. Uh-huh. You better look out. Huh? Oh. Sit here, my little hourglass. For the benefit of all those who do not know me, I am the Greek Mechanical. The soup sounds good. Thank you. Say. What did you tell us the Opera House was sold out for? Isn't it? No, it isn't. I just saw the manager and he told me up till last night they only had $17.30 in the box office. Quiet, Mr. Quiet. McGonagall, I want to... Take off your hat. Didn't you hear me tell those Gilpins I'd arrange for a hundred extra seats? Why, they went for it like a trout for a fly. Oh, fudge. Cease! Don't you use that sort of language before my innocent little daughter or I shall be compelled to lay hands upon you. I... Hush! I don't... Sit down there and have some of that hot vegetable soup. Let us finish our repast in peace. And remember that every cloud has a silver lining. And every plate of vegetable soup is filled with vegetables. Oh, that's it. Oh, Mrs. Bundleshaper. Bertha tells me Mr. McGonagall is here. <laughs> Cleopatra oh. Pepperday, you're not going to make a fool of yourself again like you did last year, are you? Why, well, I don't know what you mean. I only want him to hear me sing. Sing? Oh, rat. Who's the old squidulum over there? That's that Pepperday woman. Who? Don't you remember how she pestered you last year? Oh, I recall. She's all dressed up like a well-kept grave. Well, she's the richest woman in Bellefontaine. Well, huh? the cloud with the silver lining. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? Quick, 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 quick. Cleopatra Pepperday. Cleopatra Pepperday. Oh, um, Mr. McGonagall, I'm so glad. My to dear you. Cleopatra so Pepperday, so how oh, delighted I, I am to see me. you. Remember oh. you? How could I forget you? Oh, you How could anyone her. forget you? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGonagall. Will you sit down here? Oh, thank you. Thank you, dear. It is a pleasure, an honor, to break bread with you on this delightful afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. McGonagall. Oh, don't mention it. Oh.
Well, little man, you know who I am? Dada! <laughs> Come here. Boy, you have me wrong. His name's Albert, after his dear departed father. Yeah? Has a wonderful head. Oh, thank you, Mr. McGonagall. Shaped like a Rocky Ford catalog. Esther! We gonna have him with us for dinner? <laughs> Let me, let me, uh, please, let me help you. Yeah, come on, dear. <laughs> come on. He's holding on to the floor. There we are. Hang on. Hey, look out here. I'm just going to help you in. That's all. Get up. Now, get your foot over there. Yeah, no, no, the other, where's his other, can you see his other foot? Oh, oh here it is. He's such a friendly little man. Yes, he is. Yes. There you are. Now you're all right. <laughs> Oh, oh, Albert. See this? Oh. <laughs> now they have him here. There you are. Oh, there you are. <laughs> he has a mind of his own, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Stop him oh, as can be. There you are. Look at that. There. Now, can anybody think me nicer than that? <laughs> now, come here. There. There, little man. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I do hope you'll let me sing for you this year. You know, you were too busy when you were here last time. Yes, we were very proud, uh, very busy last season, yes. But you will let me sing for you this time. I've been looking forward to it for months. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really? Albert, now you shouldn't have done that. Whatever possessed you? <laughs> oh, Mr. McGonagall, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Very well done. <laughs> Come on, boy. Boy. Don't know whether to eat from the coat or from the plate. Oh, Albert, look what you've done to Mr. McGonagall's watch. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Mr. McGonagall. Oh, it's all right. It's such an nature. Yeah. It's just like my own. Don't apologize. Oh, it's all right. Done. It's just a little child. Oh, he does the all. cutest things. Yes, he does. Oh, you should see him when no one's around. Mm, I'd like to catch him sometime. Oh, no, or uh, see him sometime when no one's around. Oh, yeah. Albert, why did you do but that? But the minute hand won't be a bit of use after this. Mr. McGonagall, I hope he hasn't hurt your watch. Oh, no. How could you hurt a watch by dipping it in molasses? Oh, he's never done that before. <laughs> mm, I hope he doesn't do it again, Sorry. not with this watch. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I hope you won't dislike my little Albert. It'll make me love the little nipple all the more. <laughs> <laughs> Brat. A brat. A B R A T. Brat. Albert, you mustn't do that. <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Don't, don't, don't apologize. <laughs> uh, I'm used to that sort of thing. <laughs> we stage folks get this all the time. <laughs> There's one of them newfangled horseless carriages coming. Do that. See me down at the theater later. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. McGonagall, I'm all ready to sing for oh, you. Oh, fine. I've been waiting for it. Uh... Bertha, I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. See the horses carried? Oh, yes. All right, Bertha. 
Mr. McGonagall, you sit here. Please don't call me, mister. It's so formal. Call me Mark Anthony. <laughs> Mark for short. Oh, Marky. <laughs> Marky. You pierce my heart. Now, Bertha, not too fast. No, ma'am. And don't drown me. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Begin, Bertha. I wander today on the seashore. The winds and the waves were. Gathering up the shells from the seashore, gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days in the ball, gathering up the shells from the shore. Very good. I think But that was like now we are growing old in years, Willie. Our hair is all silvered and gray. To the vows that we made on that day, will it? Are fresh as the smell of new mown hay. There still is a charm in those bright shells and the sound of the great ocean's roar. That's loud. The bark of a breeze. Gathering up those shells from the shore. Very good, very good, excellent. I gathering up the shells from the sea shore. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days of all, will it? Gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, gathering up the shells from the sea shore. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Oh, those were the happiest days of all, with it. Gathering up the shells from the shore. Ah, uh, oh, you're really finished. Fine. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. You make Jenny Lynn sound like a mangy alley cat with asthma. Oh, Marky, then you really think I can sing? Why, those last high notes are still ringing in my ear. Oh, Marky. <sighs> uh, will you sit down? Oh, thank you. My little Rocky Mountain canary. Oh. <laughs> oh, Marky, I feel like I'm sitting on top of the world. Well, I... <laughs> Feels oh. same way, but I'm oh. not. Then you really think I will be a success? Oh, how can you fail with those silvery tones oh. and these oh. golden locks? <laughs> oh. oh, to think you would give me so much of your time when you are such a great artist. Oh, and it means so much to me, Marky. Well, it must mean a lot to you, dear. It means a lot to us all. Oh. I know you can't fail, my dear Cleopatra. Oh, call me. Call me your little Rocky Mountain Canary. <laughs> oh. Rocky Mountain Canary. Oh, dear. Rocky Mountain Canary. Oh. <laughs> my... <laughs> my little Rocky Mountain... <laughs> Come out there. Oh, Marky. Here. <laughs> yeah. oh. Quickly. We must hire ourselves to the opera house. Oh, yes. Quickly, dear. <laughs> oh. Mm. 
The old wren couldn't take her. Hey, little Rocky Mountain Canary. Rocky Mountain Goat. <laughs> Are you trying to flim-flam that silly old fool? You can it the uh, English uh, for staying. Rats. You can it the uh, English uh, for staying. Um, uh, oh, oh, it's just... Uh, <laughs> fun. You sure your son is here in Bellefontaine, Mr. Uh, Livingston? Yes, he came in with that theater troupe this morning. Is he a play actor? <laughs> He'd like to be one. Stage struck, huh? Mm. There's a Mrs. Pepperday here wanted to traipse off with that same McGonigal last year. But she's settled down since then. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm expecting to marry her. Last week in Kokomo, the house was sold out, capacity house. 3,000 people turned away. Well, <laughs> uh, it's 2,000 anyway. Come on, girl, flies get on her, you know. Come on, lady. Well, say, so where will I find this McGonagall troop? Over at the Opera House. I got a telegram to attach the show. I was just getting set to go over when you come in. Oh. You know, I don't monkey none with these fellas. I close them up like that. Hey, Sheriff, here comes that actor fella riding with your girl. What? <laughs> Looks like he'd cut you out. Don't they make a handsome couple? <laughs> That'd be a hot time in the old town tonight, Sheriff. <laughs> Come on, Livingston. <laughs> this, my dear, is the future temple of your art. Oh, I'm so excited, Mr. McGonagall. Mm -hmm. Calm down. Just fancy being escorted here by the great McGonagall himself. Uh, nothing, really nothing. Oh. Of course, I usually have my second man do these things. Oh, uh, come, yes. Cleopatra, dear. Hello, you little lovebirds. <laughs> Proceed me, honey. Children, this is Miss Cleopatra Pepperday. She's going to join our happy little family of the theater. Oh, Mr. McGonagall. <laughs> hmm. uh, come, 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 folks. Now for the rehearsal. Come, dear. Now, children, on with the rehearsal. Dad, Dick Bronson won't be here. He quit. The ungrateful coot. I can play his part, Mr. McGonagall. Anybody can play his part. Can you sing? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, did you ever hear the, the seashell song? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, I heard the seashell. Uh, sing a rondelay. Thank you, sir. Yes, little rondelay. One chorus. Here's one, Rolling in Love. I know that one. Mmm, that's pretty. Will you play that, please? All right. Nervous? <laughs> no. Good luck. Thanks. All right. I'm... I'm no Prince Charming. You're no Cinderella. You're just my girlfriend. And I'm just your fella. We're not living in a fairy tale or riding on a star. We're not afraid to call a spade a spade and look at things exactly as they are.
But there's a million in your smile so sunny. Well, that's my son there, Sherry. That young fella singing? Money. Say, he ain't bad at all. Here we are. Can't keep quiet. Please leave the auditorium. What's she doing up there? Who? That's my girl, Cleo. Quiet, please, quiet. This is the great McGonagall speaking to you. Plate of stew can be a banquet, dear, with you. Just got two bucks. Won't somebody lend us just a few bucks? With a few bucks, oh, we'll get license, we'll pay the preacher, and we'll keep on rolling. In love. Very fine voice. Wonderful, wonderful. Of course, he can't hold a candle to yours there. Oh, Marky. <laughs> Get hoited. Go, 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 go. Get some new drums for tonight. Oh, Marky, are you hurt? No, I had the presence of mind to fall on my head. Go, go, folks, rehearsal, rehearsal quickly. Are, are you, you hurt? hurt? No. No, 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 and no. Part is yours. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. McGonagall. You won't regret it. I hope not. Wallace! Who's that? I beg your pardon. Have I the pleasure of your acquaintance? Uh, this is my father. Uh, Dad, uh, I'd like to have you meet uh, Miss Betty McGonigal and the great McGonigal. Fancy meeting you here in Belfontin. Ah! That to you, sir. And double. Uh, I'd like a word with and you. And a triple. Uh, 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 oh, you will? Oh, very well. I can give you about 15. That's all there. I need. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Now, uh, mister, what can I do for you? I have a telegram here from your friend, the Sheriff of Cucamonga. Sheriff of Cucamonga? There's a thought. Quivera. Evidently for Ichabod McGonagall. Different family altogether. No relation. Often had mistakes. Uh, just a minute. Why, Walter, what is this? I have a telegram from Cucamonga to attach this show. Do you want this back? Hello. Then tear that up. But I'm a member of the great McGonagall Company. Spoken like a real trooper, my dear. Come, I shall rehearse you in your line. A pardonable error, sir. Oh, uh, uh, Dad, uh, Miss McGonagall is the leading lady with the show. Yes, I gathered as much. Excuse me, Wally. That wasn't very polite, Dad. No, and it wasn't intended to be. Oh, I know. Now, see here, young man. I want you to go back to college. Oh, let's not go all over that again, Dad, huh? You don't understand. I want to stay here. Your place is in college. But I promised them I'd be in the show tonight. You what? Sure, I'm going to act here on a stage. I'll go tell Betty you're sorry. I wouldn't miss seeing Cleopatra Pepper Day making a fool of herself if it cost a dollar to get in. Seems like everybody in town had the same idea. Go 
come, Mrs. Middleton. I'll find your husband if he's in New York. Jailhouse or no what? Here comes the prince. Here comes the prince. Here comes the prince. Not now, not now. What's the lowest you'll take for your rotten carcass now, you old rascal, you? What? Well, Squire, what's the lowest? Uh, let me read that for you. What's the lowest? See? Give oh, it yes, the gesture. Sure. Give it the gesture, see? What's the lowest you'll take for your old carcass now, you old rascal? What's the lowest you'll take for your... What's the... There goes the prince. That's the... Another gilder sleeve. Uh, listen, Sheriff, can't you wait a bit? My girl's got a part in the show tonight. I can't help that. I didn't come all the way from New Philadelphia to see her. Well, well, my old friend, Sheriff Pretty Willie. How are all the elks over in New Philadelphia? Most of them are waiting for the money you owe them. They are, eh? And I'm here to get it. Oh, another valentine, eh? What are you up to now, Walter? Just an attachment on scenery, costumes, and box office receipts. Anything else? I'll be responsible for the amount. Uh, Cleo, you don't know what you're getting into. Don't do that, Cleo. Then don't interfere with my career. Cleo, that little investment of yours will garner you a million dollars. Here, take it back. Oh. Place it, everybody, quickly. Come on. What's the lowest you'll take for your rotten carcass? Here comes oh. the prince. Who is that? That's my girl. She owns half the town. Ah. Oh. I have just come from the cottage of the widow Wilson and her daughter. The widow and the child must quit the cottage. <laughs> Here comes the girl now. I must watch her closely. I have now nearly reached the old mansion house. In a few moments, I shall see this Edward Middleton, this dissipated collegian. Ah, I see a gentleman approaches. My fears tell me that this is the man I seek. I shall pause till he has reached the house. Good day, son of my old friend. I've been looking for you. Ah, uh, Mr. Cribbs, any friends of my father are always welcome. Nobly said. I wish to speak to you with regard to the cottage you recently inherited from your late father. I have an opportunity of selling it. Why, I understand that a widow and her only daughter. Who are in arrears for rent. To turn them forth upon the world in the present condition of the old lady. In short, Mr. Cribbs, I cannot think of depriving them of a home dear to them as the apple of their eyes. You are pleased to be pleasant today, Mr. Middleton. Good day. Good day. The blessing of the widow and fatherless be upon thee. This, then, is the widow's daughter, nurtured in the wilderness. She knows not to the cold forms of the fashionable, miscalled world. Oh, stay, sir, I pray you. This is part of the rent which... Nay, dear girl, keep it as a portion of your dowry. Ah, uh, little did I think when I thought of selling that dear old cottage that it should be regarded as a casket invaluable for the jewel which it contains. Ah! Ah! Are you hiding again? Never mind, hide it in the door! He's shackled the Oh, God, what are you doing now? Put it down! Here comes the prince. Here comes the prince. When's Cleo going to act in this show? Oh, uh, uh, Cleo. Oh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, she'll probably go on right after the epilogue. Uh, don't be impatient, dear. <laughs> don't be impatient. Oh, don't be impatient. Hey.
landlord. I'll take another glass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> here. Ah, fancy meeting you here, Mr. Middleton. Fill him up, barkeep. But come, gentlemen. Come on, come on. Let's drink the health of my old tried friend, Cribs. <laughs> Again, Mr. Middleton, my uh, helper. Help us. Ah. Hey, what's the matter with you, old sulky? Why don't you join us, huh? I drink when I'm dry, and when I drink, I pay for it. Pay off, you're drunk. Drunk? Death and curry. Well. Mr. Middleton, where is he? Lord of mercy, what's this? You can walk, can't you? Walk away. Yes, I can walk. But oh, oh, what's the matter with my head? Blood! You have been fighting. Fighting? Oh, shame, shame. Pray give me your pardon, sir. Oh, I wish I'd died before I'd seen this. Drunk. Fighting. Oh, my poor wife, my poor child. Oh, agony, agony! That's not that third agony. Has Mr. McGonagall called me yet? He ain't gonna let you set foot on that stage. All he wants is your money, Mrs. Pepperday. <laughs> Here comes the prince. Julia, where's your mother, darling? Wine cures the gout. <laughs> oh, Bill, I've had the most glorious time. Uh, you know, old cribs. Father, <laughs> dear father. Edward, it's my mother. Mary. She is dead. Oh, horrors and I the cause. I cannot bear this. Let me fly! Edward, do not leave me. Edward, love, husband. Call me not husband. Curse me as you destroy her. Loose her arms. Leave me. Edward, brother. Father, father. Loose me. Leave me. Why must me not on fire? Madness is my strength. My brain is liquid flame. Ah, free. Farewell forever. Oh, husband. Oh, heaven. Edward, my brother. Father, father. Say. Don't look as if Cleopatra was going to be in the show at all. Maybe she played the part of the dead mother. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> This is a good thing. in living in these squalid quarters. When last we met, I suggested a change. Heaven help me. Where would you have me go? Return to the village? I will not. I must remain and find my husband. He would laugh in his drunken ribaldry. Could he hear you speak thus? Most contemptible of earthborn creatures, it is false. Ah, my proud beauty, you are in my power. Tis leap. You are unfriended. <laughs> you'll take for your rotten carcass now. Curse you, I shall be revenged for this if there is law or just law. Get out. Curse you. Kind, generous friend. 
friend, how came you here so opportunely? And what of my poor husband? Come, Mrs. Middleton, I'll find him if he's in New York. Jailhouse or no jailhouse, watch house or no watch house. <laughs> Uh, uh, just a minute, huh? Who plays this prince? Oh, you've nonplussed me for the moment. Uh, I have a very bad memory for names. Well, let me That's tell you, uh, she ain't going to put no uh, money back Harry. in this show unless she's in it. Fred, uh, oh, oh, that's a foregone conclusion, yes. Uh, excuse me, one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> And leave your home behind To all of you who've been around And found that fate has been unkind To you I say, though skies are gray Don't worry, pine or friend There's always someone Ready to forgive, ready to forget. When you find your friends untrue and the world goes back on you, we'll always see you through. A little bit of heaven, no. When you've had no luck at all And your castles start to fall Who will heal you when you fall? A little bit of heaven known as love When the sweetness of life has turned to bitter tears whose little ponderance will banish all your fears. God bless her. When adventure and its charm all have turned to Shall I rise the curtain, Governor? Rise it, yes, yes, rise it. Okay. Stop it, stop it! This is no life for my son. I know it. I've been trying to send him back to college for the past four weeks. You what? Yes, but he won't go. Hmm. Well, I think I've been wrong. I'm very sorry for what I said this afternoon. Yes, Wally told me. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Well, 
Maybe you and I ought to work together on this thing. Oh, hello, Dad. How do you like the show? Isn't it great? Come on, Betty, we're on. Oh, God. You better get out in front, Dad, if you want to catch the rest of it. I'll see you later. Come on, Betty. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Livingston. Here comes the prince. This is the last act. If you ain't in that, you ain't in nothing. gentlemen, a special added attraction for Belle Fontaine only. The great McGonagall will entertain you with his extraordinary feats of legerdemain and conjuring, with which he has entertained and mystified the crowned heads of Europe. And don't forget, folks, tomorrow night, East Lynn, and now the great McGonagall. <laughs>
Uh, there's no, no answer, no answer. Pull up your socks. Oh, quick, 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 quick. Go ahead. Uh, Who is it? Can we come in? Sure. Dad has something to tell you, Betty. Oh, I have to turn these things in. Sit down, won't you? Be back in a minute. Uh, never mind this. Uh, you own the boarding house and pack all the trunks. Where are we going, Governor? Oh, go! Quick, hurry! And you really don't object anymore, Dad? No. You can marry Betty tomorrow. If you'll find a way to get rid of the great McGonagall. I won't have it known that we're even remotely related to that egotistical windbag. Why, the man is an out-and-out -out rascal. Oh, but you don't know him, Dad. I don't want to know him. He's a great actor. A great actor? Oh, Wally, don't let anybody ever hear you say that. Why, he is a disgrace to his profession. Rather blunt fellow, that. Eh? No, Wally. You have a lot to learn about people. Well? Well, um, well maybe i better let Wally tell you. I love you, Wally, but I'll never leave Pop as long as he needs me. Uh, <coughs> uh, oh, dear, there you are. I've been looking for you. Um, um, oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to close the show. Why, Pop, there was a full house tonight. I know there was, dear. I didn't see the receipts, but from what I heard, they sounded very good. Well, then what happened? I uh, got a very flattering offer to come to New York. New York? Yes, dear. Gee. Mm. When are we going? Uh, unfortunately, I have to go alone, honey. I know that you wouldn't stand in the way of my success. I'll send for you later on. In the meantime, you shall receive your allowance. You won't have to do that, Mr. McGonagall. She can go home with Dad and me. What's this? Well, you see, sir, we, we're going to get married. What? I mean, if you'll give us your consent, isn't it wonderful how everything rounds itself out eventually? My little daughter happily married, I on my way to greater triumphs. Bless you, my children. Fine boy. If you need me at any time, financially or otherwise, I am at your beck and call. Pop. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. That's funny. He never acted like that before. Ah, uh, my good Mrs. Wendelschaefer, I regret having awakened you at this unearthly hour. But a friend of mine, Charlie Bonner, the top mounter of the Glinseretti family, is coming to spend a few days with me. We're bringing his trunk in. Come, come. No, you don't. Huh? I've had enough of your kind. Take that trunk right out of here. <gasps> Mrs. Wendelschaefer. Go on, go on, go on. However, you are mistress of this establishment. Oh, dear Charlie, how my heart bleeds for him. Hurry, 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 hurry. I wonder where he'll sleep tonight. 
You will regret this in the morning. Oh, isn't this great, honey? Are you happy? Mm-hmm. I kind of wish Pop was here. Oh, he's all right. He's probably in New York by now. I know. I hope he'll take care of himself. I suppose New York is the ambition of every actor. Oh, it's always been Pop. Telegram well, ever from since I can McGonagall? remember. Oh, oh here, from yes, Mr. from Pop. What does he say? Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my great privilege many years ago, whilst traveling through the mountains of Paraguay, to find the Acme Indians drinking the juice out of the cacti. The only real cure for hoarseness known to medical science. I have here tonight a few bottles which I am selling for one dollar. It cures hoarseness. It will cure the most stubborn case of hoarseness. I have been a martyr to the disease of hoarseness for many years. This malignant disease, whenever speaking in public as I do, and I depend on it, cures hoarseness. It will cure the most stubborn cases of hoarseness. One little sip. It cures horseland! Only the first to buy a bottle.